Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. So this is the last video of the appendicular skeleton. Today we're going to be going over the thigh, which is the femur, and then the leg, which is the tibia and the fibula. We'll also talk about the patella a little bit and then we'll talk about the foot. So the ankle, uh, the tarsals, uh, metatarsals, and the phalanges on the foot. So first we're going to go over the femur and I included the hip here um, as just a reference to show that what we're looking at here so just to get your perspective down, this is the left side. So this is left, and this is also anterior. And then this side I have flipped, but it's the right side. And this is the posterior aspect of each. So left, anterior, right, posterior. So keep that in mind that the Bones on this side here are all flipped and you're looking at the posterior side. I did this so it's an easy way to see the differences between left and right and the difference between each. Now, so when you are looking at the femur, how do you figure out what's left and what's right? Well, first thing you wanna look at is the giant ball on top. So that's the head of the femur. So let's uh, zoom down in there and look at it a little closer because it's a lot easier to see some of the important structures we see there. So here uh, we can stop it I want to see th that little structure right there. That's an important structure right there. Um, so a little ligament attaches there to the inside of the ball and socket on the hip, and the ligament and teres attaches to it. That's called the fovea, fovea capitis. So this is that little indent on the femur. It's not some sort of casting mold problem. Uh, it's just a little indent that's actually there. So this is the head of the femur. And again, this is the head of the femur over here. And then right here, just labeled on this one, this is the neck of the femur. So the, the first part of the femur is pretty simple. Now we have these giant bulges right here. So the first one, the bigger one, is called the greater now this is the only marking, that this is the only place where we find this marking. This is the greater trochanter. Now if there's a greater trochanter, there's a lesser trochanter, which is pretty much this one right here. Lesser trochanter. And you can see the uh, greater trochanter right there and the lesser trochanter right here. Now. On the posterior aspect, there's a long ridge that goes down through here. This is called the intertrochanter ridge. Intertrochanter ridge. Now, on the anterior aspect, it's not as prevalent, but there is something there. That's called the intertrochanter line. I'm just going to write IT for intertrochanter there. That's the intertrochanter line. Uh, and now also on the anterior aspect, um, I mean on the posterior aspect, there's also a little bump right here and going down a little bit. As we move down, I'll show that. It's called the gluteal, I'll label it right here since it's here, the gluteal tuberosity. And now it will change from model to model of how easy it is to see, but remember tuberosity is a large rough um, rounded region. Uh, so these are the major parts of, so remember, intertrochanter line is on the anterior side and the intertrochanter um, uh, crest. I wrote ridge here. I meant to write crest. Yeah, this one is crest. I think I was saying it's a ridge-like feature. Uh, but yes, the marking is a crest. <laughs> but yeah, so that fixes that. Uh, so those are the main markings on the top of the femur. So I'm going to clear that and move forward because after that uh, gluteal tuberosity on the posterior side, it then becomes, so you kind of see it right here in the shadows. It's like a little rough area right there. And then uh, right here, you kind of see this little line in there. That's called the linea aspera. I'm not going to label it because I want to move down to the uh, distal end here, but the little line forming there is the linea aspera, and then it separates. And then we get to down to the ends of the femur right here. So I'll label it right here. I think we can see most structures that we need to see. Now remember, the this side of the figure here, everything is flipped. So this is lateral, and over here this is medial. So we have these two ridges that come down through here. 
And these ones are called the medial and lateral supracondylar line. So here I'll just label one. So this is the medial side here. So this is the medial supracondylar line. <laughs> So supracondylar means it's above the condyle. Then this is the lateral one. I'll just write lateral right here, um, or SC line as an abbreviation. So lateral supracondylar line. So that gives us an orientation of left and right. Another thing that gives, well, medial and lateral, not left and right. Another thing that gives us this orientation is this notch right here. This notch is the medial epicondyle. Well, not really, an, it's not a notch, but this bump, medial epicondyle. So medial epicondyle, and then, so you, we can't see it over here on this one, but it would be hidden behind here. Another thing to figure out anterior and posterior on the femur, besides looking at the greater and lesser trochanter and the difference between that crest and that line, this is the easiest way to figure it out. You look at this fossa or this deep groove right here. Uh, this is called the intercondylar fossa. So it's between the condyles. So intercondylar fossa. So that is on the posterior side. So if you get that and you know the direction of the ball and socket, you know your orientation of the femur. So intercondylar fossa, uh, medial epicondyle. There's also a lateral epicondyle right here. The lateral uh, epicondyle. I'm going to write that in there quick. So with those, we also have the condyles as well. Uh, so we have the lateral condyle. And this is what forms the articulation down here with the tibia. And then the medial condyle. I'll just write uh, MC right there for medial condyle. And you can see those over here as well. Now, another feature we have here on the medial aspect and i think i labeled this one slightly wrong here so I, I wouldn't try to separate this so this one down here is technically the medial epicondyle um, so if i redraw this line it's this bump right here and again i wouldn't try to trick you up on this and then this one is actually the adductor tubercle right above the medial epicondyle a little tricky right there i was confused and i just realized why i was confused so the adductor tubercle, which is where your adductor muscles attach to. We'll get to those in the muscular system. Uh, and then right here, this is the patellar surface. Uh, so simple label there. So patellar surface. So the patella is the kneecap. So the kneecap will go right in there and then articulate right on the femur. Uh, so over here, this would this is the patella. Uh, patella is pretty simple. Uh, this is just the apex of the patella, which is on the um, inferior side. Then this one over here, here's the apex again, and it's a little flipped on this one. And then right here are the medial and the lateral um, condyles for the femur. So they would go uh, medial and lateral right there, and they just rub in that surface. I wouldn't try to trick you up on what's the left and the right patella. That would be really rude of me, or even between the medial uh, epicondyle and the adductor tubercle. I wouldn't try to trick you up on those as well. Mainly, look at these features, know what's medial, know what's lateral, know how to orient the bone. That's the important parts of this chapter. Um, so, moving ahead now, we get to the next large bone here, which is the tibia. Uh, so looking at the top of the tibia, the tibia directly articulates, I mean, you have your menisci in there too, with the femur. The fibula does not. And when we look at the fibula, it's a very, very small and thin bone. It's not a supportive bone. So if we're looking at the top of, or the top, the uh, proximal end of the tibia, we have this little bump right here. Uh, this bump is simply just called the intercondylar eminence. So the inter condylar eminence. So mainly it just separates it. And then we have the uh, medial. So this would be the medial condyle. And this is the lateral condyle. So pretty simple to label at the top. And then down here, we can't see it. Uh, it'll, it'll appear soon when I uh, play the uh, video. Uh, but we have the tibial it's a, a small bump. Uh, the tibial 
tuberosity. So when I play that, I'll highlight it again, the tibial tuberosity. Uh, so here, playing it forward now, you can see that tibial tuberosity right there. And then it comes down through here, the, the um, anterior part of the tibia, which is called the anterior border, which is the line going down the front of your shin. Um, so you can kind of feel that. So that's the top. And then one other thing I wanted to note right here is, so right here is the fibula. Fibula has an L in it. Fibula is lateral, L for lateral, L in fibula. That's how you want to remember it. So here, remember, this is all flipped. So this is what the head of the fibula looks like. Uh, so here it forms a tibial fibular joint. So right there is where this faucet is for the fibula. So the fibula articulates right in there. So you can see all the weight is pushing down right here from the femur. And the fibula is just, you know, articulating just underneath there as a supportive roll. And just like the radius and the all and others, an interosseous tissue that connects these two. So this would be the head of the fibula. Um, and But we're not going to name too much more on it. Uh, but it just articulates right there. So then as we move down through here, so we look at that a little bit more, uh, sliding down through. And now we get to the important features at the base here. Uh, so here, this is a good angle of each one. You can feel these. Now, this is one way you want to orient the tibia. First, you find the anterior border of the tibia. And then you want to find this structure right here. This structure is called the medial. Now you think, OK, it's something pointy. Could be a process. Oh, that was called the radial styloid process on the radius. Here, it gets a completely different name. The medial malleolus. <laughs> I don't know why it went to this, but it's called the medial malleolus. And if you, medial is midline, so if you reach down right now and touch that bump on your ankle, you're touching the medial malleolus of your tibia. And then on the outside here, the fibula, that one, if you touch that bump on your lateral side, that one is called your lateral malleolus. So another important feature. And that's how you can differentiate lateral versus medial. Pretty simple um, when you think about all the other things we've labeled in this chapter. And then there's also an articulation site right here between uh, the tibia and the fibula. Another, so it's the inferior tibial fibular joint. Um, and then there's the inferior articular surface right here. Um, I won't label it. So the inferior articular surface, which then articulates with the ankle bones. And the one that specifically that it articulates with is the talus. Um, so we'll show that coming up next. Another thing is how you figure out, so let's just say I handed you a fibula and I told you, is it left or is it right? It's one of the more difficult ones to figure out. I look at this little rounded end down here. You notice how it's a little longer here compared to here? This is posterior and this is anterior. Uh, so the shorter end of the blunt end down here, or the rounded end, is towards the front, and then the longer end is towards the back. Uh, and then just as long as you can get that orientation and you know you can see the smooth articulating surface here, that can tell you then what angle it is. And then just as long as you know what's distal and proximal on the fibula, you can figure out whether it's left or right. So this is the hint I use down here, very subtle hint, to figure out left and right for the fibula. So just a little, little tip there. Um, but this is also the lateral malleolus. And over here, we have the medial malleolus. So that side, again, is flipped around because this is the posterior aspect. And this is the anterior aspect of each of these bones. And then this is uh, left, and this is right. So just as a reminder that we're looking at this, everything is upside down a little bit on this side over here because I wanted to show both aspects. Now we get down to the ankle. So here I show a little bit more of the structures. I turn it around showing the different articulations here. Here I'm showing how it articulates right in there. And we form this little pocket. And this pocket then goes down into the ankle. So there you can see the articulation site that goes along the talus here. Uh, so right here is the talus. I have it flipped over over there. Um, and zooming in here, you can see where the articulation site is on the talus. Uh, this is called the trochlea of the talus. So We'll, we'll name these bones right now. Let's find a good spot right here. Here's a good spot. So this talus is a very large bone. Uh, so here, the talus. Now I'm not going to label the different faucets and markings on it, but this is the, it's called the trochlea of the talus. There's also an articulation. So a lateral malleolar faucet and the medial uh, malleolar. No, actually, it's just the trochlea there. Yeah. And then here is the 
calcaneus. So calcaneus, not not O U S, <laughs> not O S S. Calcane. Oops, I spelled it wrong. Yes, right there, calcaneus. Uh, so this one is your heel bone. You know, that's you know all massive. You see it over here, massive weight bearing bone, very uh, oddly shaped too. That's your calcaneus. These are all considered part of your tarsals. So remember in your wrist, you had all your carpals that you love to name. Don't you say you don't love to name them. Um, and then in here, we now have the tarsals, metatarsals, and so forth. Um, so now I do want to change the angle just a little bit. I don't have this one too, too perfect. Let's see if we can get back just a little bit here. Actually, we can make that work. Okay, so now let's name the other tarsals. So right here, this is the one I always start with. This is the one has a unique name. You know, it's kind of rectangular shaped too, but this one's called the navicular. So we have the navicular. And then right beside that, this one's kind of like a cube shape here. So it's appropriately named the cuboid, my favorite one. And then we have the last three. So last three are very, very simple if you know what's medial and lateral. So here, this is the medial aspect. Uh, so big toe is medial. Uh, so here, this one is the medial cuneiform. Medial cuneiform. Then this one, oh, there's an I in there. Uh, and then this one is the intermediate cuneiform. It's in between. And if that one's the intermediate, guess what this one is? The lateral cuneiform. So medial, intermediate, and lateral. So thankfully, they don't have names like hamate, capitate, and lunate again. Uh, so slightly more nice naming for the tarsal. So talus, calcaneus, cuboid, um, lateral, intermediate, medial uh, cuneiforms, and then navicular are all uh, parts of the tarsals. And then as we move down through, almost done here, we have the metatarsals. Uh, so here we have big toe starting one, two, three, just like the phalanges, four and five. Uh, they have um, a head, a shaft, and a base. So here, head, shaft, and base, same, same thing. Um, so I'm not gonna go too much into detail on them. And then again, we also have phalanges on the toes uh, and there are three, so there's a proximal, a middle, and a distal phalange on four toes, and then the big toe only has a distal, or well, a distal and a proximal phalange, so only two bones there as well. But that now goes through the hip. I do not the hip, the the leg. Uh, so now I do show how this all looks uh, on the articulated skeleton, and now Captain Jack isn't the best model here for this. He's a little falling apart down here, but it does a decent job. And here you can see right there is the line, the intertrochanter line, which is on the anterior aspect. Uh, then we move down through the femur there. Uh, so you can see where the patella sits on the femur in here, where I say Captain Jack isn't the best because he looks kind of uh, twisted right in here on his knee. He's pretty, having a bad day, I guess. Uh, and then over here, you can see the tibia and that tibial tuberosity right there on the front and that anterior border, which is like a line on the front of the tibia. And then if you would look close, you can see how the longer end of that fibula is pointing towards the posterior side. So that's a way you can help figure out left versus right on the fibula. But that is all I have for today, and that's all I have for the skeletal system. Uh, so I hope you learned a little bit today, and I hope you learned a lot in the skeletal system. I know I made a lot of these little lab videos. I wanted to separate, separate each individual uh, section as little like information tidbits instead of making one long video over it. Um, but yes, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and let me know. If not, I hope you all have a great day, and bye-bye.